I'm Sarah Northrup. I'm with Freshwater Fisheries Society. I'm one of the research and development biologists. Uh, we're here at Nod Lake today catching um, adult uh, fish to be able to put acoustic tags into them. Uh, what we've been doing here at Nod Lake for the past, uh, I guess, six years now is actually looking into the different behaviors of uh, rainbow trout. So the Freshwater Fisheries Society has long been interested in growth and survival, which is really important to the stocking program. But for anglers, it's also really important how the fish behave, where they move, and catch and release mortality. And so Nod Lake is a great lake to be able to use as kind of a living laboratory for us to answer some of these questions. Um, we started in 2009 in um, looking at various strains. We looked at Fraser Valley, Blackwater, and Penasque and where they are in the lake and how they behave um, during angling. We used fly casts, we used uh, spin casts, as well as trolling the lake. Um, and we mapped out where we caught the fish, how we caught the fish, um, their fight, uh, how well they recovered um, after angling. Uh, now we're taking it a step further and we're implanting acoustic tags into their belly so that we can see how they behave even when there's no angling, just which sections of the lake they utilize. Nod Lake, again, is a great living laboratory and that has lots of different types of habitat. So do they want to be on the shoal? Do they want to be um, in the deeper waters? Um, and at what time? So we have temperature loggers out there to be measuring different temperatures. And as I said, we'll be doing that when there isn't angling and we'll also be monitoring them during angling events, which is great that we'll actually see how the fish behave and react to novel objects or uh, for recaptures as well. And we can see how um, they recover after um, they've been released and without the need for holding them in net pens. We can see, do they go to the deeper waters? Are there reasons why that there's um, different survivals with the different strains? Is it because they behave differently? So this is really useful information for uh, anglers as well as for regulations. Um, do we want to be putting uh, fish that uh, survive better um, for catch and relief? We, we use the appropriate strain um, and we'll be comparing wild versus domestic. Um, so what are the main differences between that? And that's a huge portion for um, the regulations. But there is one that, um, that was a bit So see, this is a surgery setup. There's a, a low dose of anesthetic in this water that's recirculating. We put it into the fish's mouth so that it irrigates the gills and then cover his eyes so that he doesn't get so stressed out. Uh, and then the incision has to be in front of the pelvic girdle. There's bones that come to about there. And we want to make sure that we don't cut into any of the important things inside, like organs. And then, like I said, it needs to be long enough to fit the tag and its muscle tissue. So you have to be able to stretch it a little bit. And then the tag just goes in like that. And then we stitch it up. So when we're choosing fish, right now we're just going for the biggest ones possible. But basically you don't want the tag to be more than 5% of the body weight of the fish. I think this is about 5 grams. So we could probably go 500 grams, you know, in a fish. But it's so large that it requires such a long incision that we don't actually want to be using short fish because it's just such a large percentage of the body weight. Here's one of the tags. You can see it's about as big as my thumb. Uh, and the front part of it is where the chip is. So that's the part that does all the programming, makes all the sound. We interface with the computer and the tag that way. The back part is all battery. So these tags should last for about three years, uh, one and a half to three years. So hopefully this isn't the only season of data that we collect. Uh, we'll pull the hydrophones and stuff out when the lake ice is over in the winter, but the fish should still keep beeping. So. We should get some nice results out of it. So some of the challenges is the water, even though it's pretty early in the year, the water is already pretty warm. Uh, and so we're trying to do it as early as possible so that the, the fish can recover well. Um, part of the other, uh, the fish get stressed when we bring them in because we're angling them to catch them. So that's already a pretty stressful event. The warmer the water is, the, the more difficult it is for them to recover. We hope to have a greater understanding on how fish behave, where do they go, how are they reacting with the environment and with each other, and how they react during angling events, how they react after they've just been released, um, because the Freshwater Fisheries Society stocks over between 800 and 900 lakes um, across the province, and uh, we want to know how do the fish uh, 
react after being uh, liberated.